What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. The video of today is about a practical demonstration of what happens if I upgrade my actual Zen 2 build with the Ryzen 5 3600 with this new 5800X 3D. Basically to see if I game now and then I will change the, the CPU and you will see the new performance and then you can decide if it's worth or not the 500 bucks that it means upgrading this system with this new one. For the components, I have the old but gold MSI B450 MS Max, MA Max, sorry, so the, the really cheap board that you can find at 50 bucks, a kit of um, ballistic uh, uh, sports light, so the first, uh, the first kit back in the day, so it was the first uh, crucial ballistic uh, kit, a 3200 MHz C16, and that is tuned to 3733 MHz with uh, a fair amount of tuning in the timings, so a decent tuning that everybody can do with a kit like this, and that we show in the past that was very uh, helpful in some games. But now, let's get straight to the point. I forgot to tell you the GPU, that I'm using an ASUS RTX 3060, the non-TI version. All the settings are stock, so non-overclocked. And, well, let's get started. The good old Alterac. So here with a lot of people, we still have a nice uh, decent FPS, 135, but we don't have the spells yet, so final result has yet to be seen. But as you can see here, the 0.1% is taking a big dip. And well, the average is fine. So in this case, this CPU is, is okay. I'm a bit uh, worried about the lows, because when you start casting spells, well, it's gonna be really hard with 40 people or so. So, we will see. Okay, let's see here what we have. 90 seems decent no big drops but I'm going to reset this counter at the last boss so far so good more or less 90 FPS the game is pretty playable Okay, so we came at 130, now it's time to reset. Not much difference. 100 PS, 61% low, 51, 0.1% low. The game is fine. Sometimes I feel a bit stuttering but uh, why is it this was a nice combo back then and it's still a nice combo and we won good so Last fight, 100 FPS on average, 57 on 1% low at 23.1% low. This is just at the end because of this, I think. But anyway, the game was fine. It can be better, of course, we will see. But the game was still pretty fine. 
and here we are with the shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here we have uh, uh, everything set in 1440p performance. I'm using DLSS on performance that uh, I think, in my personal opinion, is uh, very useful and uh, we can maintain a very good uh, visual of uh, graphics detail and performance at the same time. For the graphics, I'm using the highest settings. And as you can see, when I restart the game, I'm just right about 130 and something FPS, some case even 140. So uh, with a 1440p 144 hertz display, we can take full advantage of that uh, display. So the main reason I chose uh, uh, this uh, uh, quality setup is because of the monitor, of course, because if I have <clears throat> that kind of monitor with the, that refresh and that resolution, this is personally the best option I have to make sure that I really take advantage of all I can get. So as you can see, 127 frame rate on average, 114, 114 on 1% and 109.1% uh, low. So uh, this CPU, I can say that is pretty nice doing this task. And as you can see, the GPU is at 100% while gaming. So I'm currently bottlenecked by the GPU. So I doubt that I will see any kind of improvement with uh, the 5800X3D. And now we are in Godfall. Uh, the settings is now 1440p on medium. Medium because uh, I really have a bad experience right now since uh, when I engage in a fight, uh, I have a lot of stuttering. So you will see that the 1% low, a 0.1% low will be like 10, 20, something like that. So now I'm going to engage in a combat and you will see what I'm talking about. So, well, the GPU is at 100%, so I don't know what a new CPU will do in this case, but uh, it's worth a try. If you look at the... Okay, I died. So let's try again. I just started to play the game, so I'm really a newbie here. And now, as you can see, the experience is quite sloppy. That's the reason that I'm sucking that much. Joke aside, it's not. I'm not feeling that the game is uh, is smooth. And uh, you can see, forty nine, fifty four. It's not really nice to play the game with this kind of performance. But I'm not confident that a new CPU will help me in this case because I have 97% of GPU utilization and the CPU seems not doing much. But I also know that uh, in this game, uh, memory bandwidth is very important. So we will see after we swap the CPU if the big L3 cache in this case is helping or not. Now, to swap uh, and upgrade uh, the new CPU is very easy. I just have to remove the IO8 sync, uh, well, the pump, and then I will mount the new CPU and I start the PC. Click uh, two things in the BIOS, so set XMP, and that's it. This is the main reason that this CPU upgrade can be convenient so, for some users, so it really requires about nothing to do to make it. And well, Let's do it and we can play again and you can see the results. And here we are in the BIOS. In fact, there's another thing that I forgot to tell you. It's not uh, like I changed the CPU and I'm ready to go because I need to update the BIOS. If you have an older BIOS, like in this case, one year old BIOS, you can still boot and log into Windows. But if you don't do the update, the upgrade, the system will run at the base speed, which is 3.4 gigahertz. So you must update the BIOS to the latest version to be able to use the CPU as it's supposed to be with the boost and everything. So what I'm going to do now is to update the BIOS, set the XMP profile because you don't need any memory tuning and I will start the system. All right, I got lucky. I entered the random in Alterac again. So, reset the counter and boom. But this is 
quite something. <laughs> 230 FPS. And it's pretty stunning because, you know, before was uh, much, much lower. So we will wait and we can see how is the boss fight or the stressful situation with this uh, CPU. Yes, almost 200. Some dips, but wow. I'm really fighting at 200. Yes. dump group so I have to try again if I can tonight Renation. let's see how this thing will do nice <laughs> so well so far so good usually here is a pretty big mess seems holding Very well, I'm able to actually play inside this mess. Not bad, not bad. And so here we are again with the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We have more or less the same average, maybe 6 FPS more, something like that. Um, 2 FPS more, 1 FPS more in the 1% low. And the point 0.1% low, we had a big dip, like say 20 FPS uh, lower because we have the memory that are not tuned. So it's always important to tune the memory, even if we have a CPU with a bigger tree cache. But well, in this case, it doesn't really matter with this kind of uh, uh, games. So we see basically no change at all since we are GPU limited. So in this case, we didn't see any difference at all. And we are in Godfall again, so let's see how it plays out. That was fast, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so far it seems a bit better. Because as you can see we have like 20 FPS more in the 1% lows. So it seems it seems better, definitely better. I I don't have any more that big stuttering, so the the combats are a bit more fluid. And that uh, 20 FPS uh, in the one percent low, uh, really you feel it because now the game is much more smooth. Still, it's not running at its best because it is an AMD GPU optimized game the, and it's a pretty new game so it's really charged in the in the engine so this I think is better to be played with a big GPU because it's very demanding let's see here well, we have more or less the same 1% loss I'm playing badly, I know, but I'm talking, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, we have more or less the same uh, uh, FPS uh, on average, uh, slightly less. We have uh, 20 FPS more in the 1% low, and uh, 
like nine, eight, nine FPS more in the 0.1% loss. So not a big deal, but in any case, in my point of view, is not. I mean, for five hundred dollars or euro or whatever, I mean, is not, is not, uh, is not worth it. Since uh, I can feel the game a bit better, but honestly, if I change the GPU, the gain will be much, much higher. All right. So after a couple of days uh, spent uh, entirely with this uh, build. Uh, playing various games and do a lot of stuff. I have to say that uh, the, the benefits that I really perceived a lot was in World of Warcraft or similar game that like uh, esports, a multiplayer game with, that use a lot of CPU or they are using an old engine with a single threaded uh, uh, CPU usage. For everything that is like a, a lot of GPU bound, uh, I didn't see any difference mostly at all. Uh, I tried as well Godfall that uh, you saw. Uh, usually it, it needs a, a big uh, CPU to be able to, to perform better, but in that case only with the 3019 ping or something that is really, really powerful like uh, uh, on the GPU side. But uh, if you have a, like a, a medium-high high range uh, GPU like the 3060, 3070, 3080, something like that, uh, you don't really need uh, uh, a CPU that powerful to be able to, to feed correctly the GPU. So if you have a bid like this and you have like the 3600 or a 3800 or a 5600, it doesn't really change a lot if you, if you use this CPU for all that kind of uh, video games. But well, if you do esports uh, or heavy multi multiplayer game, I suggest you that you can consider this because with one upgrade, you can literally uh, having like double the FPS on your favorite game. I will try in the next days to show you some uh, uh, alternative to this, like uh, a cheap uh, DDR4 board uh, with the 12th generation Intel or stuff like that. So you can decide if it's okay to upgrade your current build, wait for Zen 4, or start uh, looking to, to Intel at 12th generation in preparation to the 13 and so on. So stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one.